Greensboro Science Center, so stop by and say hello. But um, between you and me, I wouldn't get too close. All right, let's bring back that four to five theme music. I like the little music there. It really brought me in the mood. I like the yeah. tiger running behind you. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> that was all fake. That wasn't a real yes, tiger or anything. True. Guys, don't worry. All right, so the big conversation really for the past year and a half has been this Business 40 project. Well, we just got some new information about that project. All remaining Business 40 bridges in Winston-Salem will open tomorrow. Marshall and Cherry Street's bridges over the Business 40 work zone will open tomorrow. High Street from Brookstown Avenue to Marshall Street will open. And the Brookstown underpass beneath the freeway is also opening. Another big story is the impeachment trial. Senators getting eight more hours of questioning. The next step is debate for witnesses. President Trump's lawyers introduced some new arguments on Wednesday. Take a listen. And if a president does something which he believes will help him get elected in the public interest, that cannot be the kind of quid pro quo that results in impeachment. Senators spent much of the time questioning if the Senate should hear from new witnesses. A key witness at the center of the debate is John Bolton. Democrats need support from four Republicans to secure witnesses. If the Senate rejects the new witnesses, the impeachment could wrap up by tomorrow. Now, because of the impeachment trial, only part of The Young and the Restless aired this afternoon. CBS News says the episode will re-air at 1.38 a.m. You can also watch the full episode on CBS.com or the CBS All Access app. The Bold and the Beautiful did not air at all today. It will also re-air overnight at 2.38 a.m. New episodes could air as early as tomorrow, but they could also get pushed back even more because of additional coverage of the Senate impeachment trial. We do want to let you know it is not a decision made here at WFMY that comes from CBS The Network. But as soon as we get details, we'll update you on air and online. And we have details with the forecast. We will start with a few temperatures here. It's 47 in Winston-Salem, Greensboro, you're at 49, High Point at 50, and we'll hover around, say, the 49 to about 51 degree mark. That'll be for much of the triad. Get into the mountain communities, and you're dropping down to that 34 to 37 degree mark. And uh, it looks like that we'll probably just hover in that area for about another hour or so, and then we'll begin our trek down. We drop to the freezing mark at 32 degrees for tonight. 47 will be your high temperature tomorrow. We think a little afternoon sprinkle will start to develop. We could see some heavier rains as we head into uh, Friday and probably into Saturday morning, but we think it'll all leave by then. We'll have the seven day forecast for you coming up in just a minute and we'll give you the complete forecast all the way through your weekend. Parents or caretakers of newborns, you'll want to listen to this. About 165,000 inclined infant sleepers are now being recalled due to a risk of suffocation. The recalled sleepers include Swaddle Me By Your Bed by Summer Infant, Pillow Portable Napper by Evenflow, Little Lounger Rocking Seat by Crago, and one more here, the inclined portable sleeper with adjustable feeding position for newborns by Delta Children. If you have any of these sleepers, you need to get in touch with the manufacturer for a refund. Fortunately, no babies have died from these four new recalled sleepers, but inclined sleepers in general have been linked to at least 73 infant deaths. Vanessa Bryan is making her first remarks since the death of her husband and daughter. Two days after the helicopter crash that killed her loved ones, she posted an emotional tribute to her late husband, Kobe, and their 13-year-old Gianna, who they called Gigi. On Instagram, she wrote, My girls and I want to thank the millions of people who have shown support and love during this horrific time. Thank you all for the prayers. We definitely need them. She said her family is devastated by Kobe and Gianna's deaths, as well as for the families of the seven other people who lost their lives in the same crash. She asked for respect and privacy as her family navigates what she called their new reality. And she finished the post by asking people to donate to the Mamba Sports Foundation that will support the other families affected by this tragedy. Well, NBA great and former Kobe Bryant teammate Shaquille O'Neal will make a big donation to the families of the helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant. He posted recently that he was going back and forth as to whether he should go ahead with his huge Super Bowl party he does most years. And in the post, he says that he will go through with that because he said, quote, that's what Kobe would have wanted.
All right, it's time to check our email bag. The good, the ugly. We are answering your questions, comments, and concerns. So today's email comes from viewer Greg Dockery. He says, why don't people address the other people on the helicopters of Kobe Bryant's instead of always saying Kobe Bryant and his daughter along with seven other passengers? They have families and names also. Now, no one will remember them because of all the news people only talk about Kobe Bryant. That's a shame that the world only focuses on the famous. It's a bad world when people have no more compassion than that. Now, we are addressing this because we have discussed some of the other victims here on our show and on our other newscast. I had basketball coach. His name is John Outabelli. And his wife, Carrie, and daughter, Alyssa, were also on that plane. Christina Mauser was a basketball coach at a day school. And Sarah Chester and her daughter, Peyton, and the pilot, Ara Zabayan, were all on board when that helicopter crashed. Of course, we are hoping they all rest in peace and prayers to all the families involved. Of course, Gianna played basketball uh, with Alyssa and Peyton, who you see there pictured on your screen. And I, I understand where that gentleman was coming from who write in because that is the, the big headline. I mean, Kobe Bryant was known worldwide. We don't want to lessen the impact of right. everyone else who was on that plane, uh, but that is the name that people know more. And I think once that news was out, then the news media, ourselves included, all did go back in to say, let's make sure we know what's going right. on with all the others too. There were connections there with yeah. Kobe and those other folks. It's well. certainly tragic for all involved, but it I is. have to echo Kathy here who just commented on our live stream and saying she's glad that Vanessa Bryant included the other families in her Instagram post and uh, she more than anyone knows what they're going through right now and including the option to donate through the Mamba mm -hmm. Foundation. It's a very good thing. All right, we'll keep you posted on all that and uh, what develops right now. We'll take a short break and be right back. Welcome back to the four to five. You know there are some people that just watch the Super Bowl for the commercials. Well, guess what? Some of those commercials are coming out early. We found a website that has it all in one place. The name of the website is news.avclub.com, but they have all of the Super Bowl commercials 
I mean, look at this all in one place that have been released so far. This is a current trend in case you're wondering. It's still loading in. Each of these videos are loading. It has a lot of videos on one page, but it goes through all of these basically and tells you what they're all about. You can watch them and everybody has their favorite, but I had one that I absolutely loved. I thought it was really cool. Brian Cranston. Uh, I loved him in Breaking Bad. Now he's doing a commercial for Mountain Dew. We want you to take a look at this one where uh, he acts like he's in The Shining, the classic horror movie. Here's Mountain Dew Zero. I am thirsty. <laughs> Zero. And look at the end. <laughs> That is the spot. It's very funny. You got to watch for that one. But you can see about there's 20 plus of these commercials on that one website there, uh, news.avclub.com. And it's, I think there's 29 commercials, all of them right there. I just love Tracy Ellis Ross. So the fact that she's so in that commercial, it's right there at the top of the list for me. So I have a bit of an issue with them releasing the Super Bowl commercials before the big game on Sunday. But uh, if you stay tuned on the four to five in my two cents, you'll hear all about yes, that yes. in about a minute and a half. By the way, there's one with <laughs> MC Hammer and Cheetos, because you know how you get the Cheeto oh, hands. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and then his whole thing is, oh, I can't touch that. Uh, can't touch uh, that Cheeto. Uh, I, was, I thought he was going to say, like, stop Cheeto time. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably in there, too. <laughs> this got us thinking, like, what would you do if you had the power to create your own Super Bowl commercial? What actor, what product would you put together? Brian Bennett's been following this, and what do folks say? We got some crazy comments, Brian. Yeah, crazy comments. This was actually, like, a really fun one, Eric. Um, <laughs> we got one from Shelby J. Uh, and if you don't know who she is, do your Googles, please. That's but uh, right. anyway, <laughs> <laughs> she says, my boy Flavor Flay for Rolex. Oh, and I think that oh that's a good one. one. Yeah, the big clock. Boy. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's crazy, right? <laughs> Uh, Amila says, Steve Harvey for men's hair care. I can oh, see they're that. doing him oh. dirty. <laughs> mustache. One. Uh, Betty says, I would like to sponsor an ad of nothing but silence. Oh, oh that might I work. would get some attention. Yeah, definitely attention. Uh, Wendy says, uh, Girl Scout cookie star, my Girl Scout troop, go 02171. Okay, she had to get her shout out. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. So, yeah, I mean, pretty good ones, right? I think uh, my favorite was the Flavor Flavor. The Flavor Flavor yeah. was awesome. Yeah. That's the why uh, they should do, um, if you're doing Steve Harvey, you got to do like, crest or something he's got the big oh smile, yeah you know? i'm sure he's he has been in a couple where he mixed things up after the whole debacle with uh, miss, miss america universe. miss universe yeah. when right. he makes the contestants right. up what about the mustache guys the steve oh. harvey he does have the uh, yeah. commanding like mustache yeah, yeah. i think just morgan too. freeman just needs to be in more commercials his voice is just so soothing to me whatever he's selling i would buy you believe it. it and yes. i would believe it yeah Okay, so the big game, it means the good commercials. It also means food. Yeah, yeah right? And a social uh, media analytics firm called Talkwalker is really tracking the pregame buzz about what the most popular food items and apps are. There were almost 120,000 conversations about dip alone last week. Just dip. <laughs> and chili leads in that category. Now, if you ask me, chili is a food, not a dip. But there were 110,000 combos about chili. The main courses, however, sandwiches lead the buzz. There were 38,000 conversations going on online about subs and hoagies. Pizza was second, and wings rounded out the top three most talked about foods. It all sounds good to me. It's all about the finger food. It what is. can I just pick up and pop in my mouth? Like a jalapeno popper. Ooh, uh, I like it. Marcy, now you got me. Yeah, I know. I like anything you can dip. That's kind mm -hmm. of my thing there. Yeah. By the way, we were talking, uh, Brian brought up Shelby J. She used to sing with Prince in the New Power Generation. She will be our guest here in studio tomorrow. She, because she that. was. Did you not know that yet? No. She was, Welcome to the 4 to 5, Maddie. She was in <laughs> Super Bowl with Prince at the halftime show in 2007. She's going to talk about her experience with that tomorrow. Where have I been How all day? How cool is I, that? I don't know. Y'all have to text me. <laughs> Y'all let They're Maddie know. Out. Use the hashtag 4 to 5. Let Maddie know what's going on. Tell me what's going on. No one else does. <laughs> we'll be right back.
Welcome back to the four to five everyone. The U.S. finally has a better handle on maternal mortality data. Health experts say this is the first step towards identifying ways to reduce pregnancy related deaths all across the country. New data from the National Center for Health Stats show that the maternal rates go like this for every 100,000 births about 17 women die. Now if you break that number down by race, black women are dying at a much higher rate two and a half times more than white women, while Hispanic women had the lowest rate. In 2018, 658 women died while giving birth or near the end of their pregnancy. Health experts say the number should be much lower and that maternal, maternal mortality is an indicator of the health of the nation as a whole. They also say this new standardized data and the way that it's being collected right now is a step in the right direction, but more work needs to be done to eliminate preventable deaths. The CDC says the U.S. life expectancy is going up for the first time in four years because the death rates for cancer and drug overdoses are going down. All right, so those numbers suggest an infant born in 2018 will live on average 78 years and eight months. For men, the life expectancy is now 76 years and two months. And for women, it's 81 years and one month. The U.S. life expectancy was increasing for years, but from 2014 to 2017, it actually fell slightly. That decline was blamed on surges in overdose deaths and suicides, along with cancer. Keep chatting with us on our Facebook Live feed, WFMY News 2's Facebook page. Use that hashtag 4 to 5. We'll be right back. Well, it looks like James Corden is trending these days. Now, you may have heard the social media uproar about this uh, video. It shows James Corden doing, of course, carpool karaoke with Justin Bieber this time, but the car was being towed. He wasn't driving it. Fans were upset saying, hey, you're not actually driving the car. So Corden went on his show to address this issue, tongue firmly planted in cheek. Take a listen. In the case of Justin Bieber, it was a safety issue where we thought it was best to tow the car, right? Frankly, I just kept getting lost in his eyes, okay? <laughs>
<laughs> he Don't went we on, all? He went on to say <laughs> that it was it's a bit that they right. do on TV. It's purely for entertainment, of course. He says that most of the time he is driving the car, but if there's a costume change or something you know, wonky they're doing during that segment, then they have to tow for safety purposes. But he looked at the camera at one point and he goes, this is a show that's for entertainment. <laughs> Not everything is real right. on here. It was very yeah. funny. You know, it's, he put the list of the times he was actually yes. driving and the list that he was being towed. It was like five times he was being towed and then on the other side it was just a scrolling list right. of all these celebrities so I believe him he really does drive most of the time give him a break I mean that's a hard job to do to interview someone and ask good questions and drive. while you're driving yes and he said he goes it is true most of the time I'm putting celebrity lives in my hands <laughs> really <laughs> when he's right? driving around. that's absolutely true all right well we put a Brian Bennett's lives in our hands every day every that was day. a bit of a stretch <laughs> but you see where I'm going with this we got to check in with Brian Bennett yeah. what's going on <laughs> uh well Ramona says she loves watching us in the afternoons and Ramona we love seeing you well we don't really get to see you but you know what I mean we love that you're <laughs> watching you us on the four to five okay and uh, Elizabeth says uh, she's watching the Super Bowl and cannot wait for the halftime commercials but we can't either uh, and Isaac says uh, if he could do a Super Bowl commercial, he would do one with Steve Harvey. And he said uh, it would be for men's hair loss. So. Oh. 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 Is that even worse than men's hair care? Which one is worse? Know. Either way, at least one one's for, for hair loss. Like, I don't for even hair get loss that. And yeah. then for the it. hair that he doesn't have. Okay, well, let me tell you who I'm rooting for in the Super Bowl. I'm rooting for J-Lo. I'm rooting for Shakira, Shakira. and I'm rooting oh, yeah. for Demi Lovato. Those are three of the performers. Performers. Yes. yes. Demi singing the national yes. anthem, and then the halftime show is J Lo and Shakira. Shakira. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be lit. I haven't seen <laughs> Shakira in a while, right? Am I right about that, or no? Or am I just out of touch? I mean, she's had a couple songs come out, but not really as much as J Lo. It's been like ten yeah. since she had that. You know movie. what I can confirm? What's that? Her hips don't lie. They oh, don't. They don't. They do not. And I will not say any other <laughs> comments. It's a song. I'm it's done. a song. Yes, in case it is. you didn't. <laughs> you know, I got invited to a Super Bowl party today, and then that really put the pressure on what I'm going to have to make and bring to that Super Bowl party. So in the comment section, just please let me know. What's easy? Tips. Pop in the oven. We'll take it. Yeah. All right, in the meantime, let's uh, check the forecast. We do have some rain coming in that we'll talk about. It's not so much for today or really tonight. It's tomorrow evening. It's a 70% chance of rain. Now, we think a lot of this will be overnight Friday night, but you will see some of this Friday late afternoon. But 47, the high temperature. And look how we build with these highs. 51 on Saturday. Now, we still see a 50-50 shot of rain then. And our overnight low drops to 33 on Sunday. That is Groundhog's Day, in case you didn't know. So 56 degrees, we think he will, he will see his shadow and that would mean that Punxsutawney Phil will call for six more weeks of winter if that happens. We'll see. Doesn't feel like winter right after that, though. Low 60s for highs when we should be in the upper 40s. Monday sunny. Tuesday and Wednesday gets a little unsettled again. It's a slight chance Tuesday at 20%, but 40% for Wednesday and Thursday. And as that system starts to move by, we'll see those temperatures start to slip down again. 54 degrees by Thursday. Overnight lows will be really mild because of all the cloud cover and rain. You look for lows around 51 degrees. That's warmer than our normal high temperature this time of the year. Next week, we're coming back. Hey, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together like a classic combination.
afternoon. Welcome to your four to five. Eric, Tahitia, Maddie, Brian, we're all here. <laughs> Everybody. And Sean behind the camera yes. today. <laughs> we are here to inform you, really make you feel connected. You know, we are chatting with you right now on our Facebook page, WFMY News 2. Hop on over to that Facebook Live and let us know what you're talking about today. Yeah, I want to say hi to Margaret who says that she is watching from Ramsor. We want to see where you are watching from. Let us know in the comments here. You just have to go to the WFMY News 2 Facebook page to join the conversation. Right now, we're going to get you all caught up on some headlines of the day with your four to five roundup. We are starting uh, locally here in the triad. An update to a shooting investigation in High Point. Police say 48 year old Brian Castillo was sent to complete a job at the Chatham Woods apartment complex this morning when someone shot him in the chest as he was standing in the doorway. Police tell us Castillo is on a breathing machine right now in the hospital and is in critical condition. Police are still investigating and haven't said what charges the shooter will face. North Carolina health officials confirmed nine flu related deaths last week, bringing the flu death total to 54 this flu season. Local health officials say at least three of those deaths were in Guilford County. The state recorded more than 20 flu related deaths last flu season. We're also learning of the first person to person spread of the coronavirus here in the U.S. Health officials say the new patient is a husband of a Chicago woman who got sick after returning from China. There are now six confirmed cases in the U.S., at least 170 dead from the virus, all of those deaths in China. And back here in the triad, the newest police chief in Greensboro wants to continue community conversations. Chief Brian James is hosting eight more community meetings that will have you uh, giving you the opportunity to uh, meet with him and ask him those important questions. Each meeting will start at 630 in the evening. That first one scheduled for February 11th at the Barber Park Event Center. We have cooler weather in store for us as we head into the uh, nighttime here, but the bigger story would be what happens to us by the time we get to next week. We are warming it up substantially too. I want to show you the whole seven day forecast here. So tonight you'll see that overnight low right at the freezing mark. That would be 32 degrees for the low tomorrow's highs at 47. Now we'll go up to a 70% chance of rain on Friday. We think that'll be moving in probably second half of the day, by the way, and uh, on Friday afternoon and then 51 on Saturday with a 50 50 shot of rain Sunday. We clear out and there's our warming trend 56. That's Groundhog's Day, by the way, probably will see his shadow and then low 60s for highs Monday sunny, but a little bit of rain Tuesday. It's a 20%. That's not really the threat. The bigger one would be Wednesday, Thursday at 40% with highs dropping down to 60 Wednesday and 54 on Thursday. Well, we are just four days away from the Iowa caucus. Monmouth University, a new poll from them shows former Vice President Joe Biden with a lead over Senator Bernie Sanders. So Biden and Mayor Pete Buttigieg are actually the only candidates who are spending time on the ground in Iowa because the four other Democratic candidates are in D.C. for the Senate impeachment trial. In your health headlines today, the Surgeon General released a new study on the importance of quitting smoking. One major takeaway, there's not enough evidence to prove e-cigarettes actually help smokers quit smoking. Research shows that more than three out of five U.S. adults quit smoking and less than one third of those that quit used FDA approved methods to do so. Now the same research suggests that medications and behavioral counseling increases a person's chance of successfully quitting. Now another key finding here, the Surgeon General predicts raising prices of cigarettes can help push people to quit. They also say that maybe some smoke free policies, mass media campaigns on the dangers of smoking and statewide tobacco control would also help. More states are joining a movement to ban discrimination against natural hairstyles. Washington State is the latest to look at this. If the bill passes, businesses and schools won't be able to discriminate against people based on their hair. Currently, the law states that they cannot discriminate based on race, religion and sexual orientation. So we talked about this briefly last week when we introduced you to a Texas teenager who can't walk in his high school graduation because of his dreadlocks. His school says they violate the dress code because they're too long. DeAndre Arnold refused to cut his dreads and is now suspended from school. Texas is not one of the states looking at a hair discrimination bill. California recently voted their bill into law. New York City and Tennessee are also debating some similar measures.
I just got to say that I think it is really ridiculous that places are able to discriminate based on hair that grows out of someone's head. Uh, I agree. As an African American woman, I mean, my hair, you know, it takes me a lot to deal with it. And just to be limited in opportunities because of something that you can't control, I just don't feel great. I saw him that. interview, well, Ellen, when he was on Ellen the other day. And he said, you know, my dad, I think he said, my dad's from Trinidad. He goes, this is part of our heritage. It's not a an issue is not a problem and then Ellen brought up a really good question she goes are girls at your school do they have hair long hair he goes yeah mm. and then she said don't get it right you know, it's interesting yeah uh, several states are already looking at that hair discrimination law I won't be surprised if this is added to many other discrimination laws really across the United States all right let's check in and see what Tanya has for us today All right, your house or your rent payment, that's probably the biggest expense that you have in your monthly budget. Next comes probably your car, right? But here's the question I have for you. What kind of insurance do you have on your vehicle? Just insurance. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, have insurance. I don't know the I specifics. I wasn't meaning like, you know, comp and collision. the companies. Yes, this is what I mean. Do you have comp? Do you have collision? collision? Do you have gap? Do you have liability? I have I everything on the is. two adult cars, uh -huh. but on the teenager cars, we have liability for them, but not compensation because we'll just, okay. yeah. Got it. All right. So <laughs> let's tell you what you have to have, folks. Okay, here we go. In the state of North Carolina, you have to have liability insurance. That pays for the damage and injuries to the other driver should you get into a crash but collision coverage for the car that you're no longer paying a loan on right that is optional but it is for you it pays for damages to your car you, if you don't have collision and you get into a wreck you're not going to get paid for your car mm. Now that makes your bill a whole lot less, right? Right. And so when we look at the bottom line, we think, okay, do I really need yeah, this? Yeah, right. I think you kind of really need this. All right, <laughs> here's something else. Uh, who here is paying a car payment? Okay, all three of you. Yes. Okay, so then what you probably need to know is, do you have gap insurance? What's gap insurance? All right, let's take a look at I feel so bad right now. <laughs> okay, gap insurance is when they pay for your car because there's a discrepancy in how much your car is worth. Your car loan was 30,000, your car is worth 25. Gap covers the difference in cost and worth because your car depreciates as soon as you drive off the lot. Mm. Yeah, okay. All right, next we're going to get into this next bit of information. You're seeing video of people wearing masks in airport shopping areas on the street, all due to the coronavirus. There is no recommendation for the general public to wear a mask. Okay. But are you going to? Would you feel safer? Probably not. Uh, I don't think so. No. It I actually I, makes me nervous. Oh, interesting. No, it makes me nervous if I see people wearing it, but I'm not so sure I wouldn't. If, I, if there was a case in our area, I'm not sure I wouldn't try to wear it. Okay. One We're going to talk about what kind of protection this mask give you, gives you, and believe it or not, there is a right and a wrong way to wear a mask. Hmm. You would think, really, what's the trick to this? Oh my gosh. But Two Wants to Know is going to take a look at it for you. We'll um, have it for you a little bit later on. All right. Thanks, Tanya.
and welcome back to the four to five. All right, you wouldn't throw away money like cold hard cash, right? So why are you throwing away food that's here in your kitchen? A new study finds that one third of American families are throwing away perfectly good food. So researchers found as a nation we throw away about $240 billion worth of food each year. On average, that's more than $1,800 per household. Whoa, households with healthier diets that include a lot of perishable vegetables and fruits. Yeah, they tend to waste more money and more food. Researchers believe if we change our food storing habits, we might waste a little less. Hey, and speaking of food, we wanted to get you in on this conversation that is trending on social media. You've probably seen this photo. It has photos of steak, how well you want that done, of bread, and of course of your morning cup of joe. So people are asked to pick how they like each using a number or a letter. On the top, you see the steak ranges from rare to well done. For the bread, you have not toasted to burnt. And on the bottom, we have coffee that's dark to mostly milk. Now, personally, I would have to say three for the steak, three for the toast, and between B and C for the coffee. What would you pick, Eric and Maddie? So I'm between two and three for steak, three for toast, and pot D to E for coffee. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I, I like it really well. I think I'm with you, Tej. I'm, I think I'm a three and then a C all the way down. Just the just middle right of the there. road. There I am. Not too hot, not too cold. I'm lukewarm. I like <laughs> That's the like two, the only reason it's okay to be lukewarm in that situation. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but I don't know who's picking the burnt toast number uh, six. People. I know people that like people that. People are. <laughs> My wife likes hot dogs that are burnt. You know how they you can burn the hot dog? I can't stand that, but not, some people love that. I My can't. mother liked burnt toast. I remember that. I got to scrape it off. Oh, if yeah. it gets yeah, to, I gotta, yeah, yeah, I agree. But I'll still eat it because I don't want to waste food. A third of Americans waste food. don't want to waste it. So there <laughs> you go. Well, I posted this on my Facebook page because I know I get a lot of play with you guys when I post about food online. Always. Uh, We've had more than 90 comments right now, yeah. Brian, and you've been monitoring them. What do they say? A lot of comments. Uh, people obviously love their steak, toast, and coffee, right? <laughs> so uh, Lynn <laughs> says that she likes it like a 4.5. Do we have the graphic? Can we put the graphic back up? I don't up? know if we can get that back up again. Uh, what, which one? 4.5. So, oh, there we go. There we go. Steak. So she's in between like a four and a five. Okay. okay. And then for her toast, she likes number three, a little burnt, but not too burnt. And then for her coffee, she likes C. And Kevin says he likes uh, number five for his meat, number four for his toast, okay. and D for his coffee. And uh, Lynn actually said, now I want steak. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all kind of hungry With now. You. And uh, yeah, for me, I think I would do number three on the steak. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> away. Take it away. Well, describe your toast. It, my toast is the one that's not burnt, but number there you go. five is the up one again. right beside gotcha. number six. Yeah. Okay. I don't like a little crispiness wow, on my toast. Does. And coffee is just in. I know it's not a letter, but that's for no because I don't drink coffee. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Uh, he's one of those people <laughs> cannot be trusted. I you know, I, I was surprised that a lot of people were commenting F for the coffee, which was the lightest one. That's mostly milk. I'm close. To yeah, that's being okay. Milk and, and uh, sugar. <laughs> That will wake you up yeah. in the morning, right? <laughs> That's why I do it. Yeah. All right, as long as we're talking about foods, let's go to this. We talk about bagels. I don't know many people who don't like bagels. And if you're looking for the real deal, we're talking the New York style, the authentic bagel, then I have a place for you. And his backstory is pretty cool, too. Check out New Garden Bagels. <laughs> I made bagels back in high school. We got blueberry, then and went to the military in the corporate world. I decided to pull back on my roots and decided to open up my own place and make bagels and it's the ball. I know it's just water with a bunch of dough floating in it, but I'm hungry. I need to have roughly 100 dozen done by 5.30 a.m. And throughout the day, probably add another 20 to 30 dozen on top of that. Per 100 pounds of dough, I'll get 40, roughly between 40 and 42 dozen out of each 100 pound. Goodness, and is this just a dry mix? Is that what that is? We add in water now, and then it'll, it'll spin for 15 minutes. Okay, cool, let's do it. The pop shop in Greek get them from here. It's someone has to be here by between 2 and 2.30 in the morning if it takes an hour for the oven to heat up. That's all right, that's all right. Ow! That thing is hot! Okay, that is hot! Come here in the morning, so I leave here about maybe 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Then I'll come back in the afternoon to make sure everything is set for the next day. There it is, sausage, egg, and cheese. Provolone cheese on Asiago. I love this. I put 
Wait, no, 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 no. Photographer Manny, he got something to eat too. Give me that. Give me that thing. You get to see the behind the scenes guy. We get to eat. You ready? I'm ready. All right, that's it. You guys come out. You gotta check this out. Mm. <laughs> well, you missed it, but Manning and I were <laughs> Manning and I were like this together. Because oh, it was so good. That place is amazing. Really and is. literally every food story, we were talking about the steak, the bread, the coffee. I'm always hungry. It's almost dinner time. Always. You guys are doing this to me. We're always hungry. By the way, a cool thing about his story, uh, they're open every single day. Mm -hmm. I mean, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's. Snowstorm. Snow, yes, yeah, snowstorms. We've done live shots from there. He's <laughs> open every single day. And first responders always eat free at his restaurant because uh, he was career military right. for a long time. So. And, and what time does he arrive to work? Uh, he gets up at 2 and two. gets in there around 2.45 to 3. And they have, as he said, like 26 dozen bagels done by 5.30. Wow. Jeez. Sounds like a former life that yeah. I used to know. Yeah. You know, my favorite part about the story is that Eric had to be there at 6.15 this morning. Had to get up a little early, didn't know, you, buddy? Manny and I complaining, and I said, no, 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 let's think back to about four months ago when we wake up at three every <laughs> right. single day. Yeah, wasn't that bad. <laughs> wasn't that bad. All right, so think about this. You've been told to brush your teeth for two minutes twice a day, right? What you eat also impacts your smile. Healthy body equals healthy smile. They say eat foods rich in minerals to keep gums and teeth healthy, and that means drinking plenty of water to wash away the bacteria. You gotta tell your kids if they want a pretty smile, they need to eat their fruits and vegetables. Fruits and veggies actually help clean Pack, plaque and freshen breath. Cheese and yogurt, good sources of calcium, of course, and healthy bacteria, actually. And protein like fish and chicken help strengthen tooth enamel as well. There's your lesson. Mama said do that. We'll be back. <laughs>
All right, welcome back to the four to five. So when you think of a baby shower, you might think of this some pastel colors, right? Pink and blue, or maybe you even think of a game that involves a stuffed animal and a blindfold and a diaper and who really knows what's going on here, right? But baby showers are changing. We want to tell you a little bit more about it. First showers are going co-ed, the traditional women's only gathering. Yeah, it's fading. The focus shifted from just one parent and allowed partners to be involved. So the idea of having a shower before the baby comes, it's also kind of fading away too. There's a new trend going on called new mom showers. It focuses on postpartum life. So instead of coming over with items on a register, the guests come over with food for the new family and offer to watch the little one while those new parents get some much needed R and R. It has a name because I know that's what a lot of close friends will do for their friends mm -hmm. who have babies. Like it's it's not like uh, what can I bring? It's like what can I do to make mm -hmm. your life easier? Do you need to take a nap? Do I need to do the laundry for you so yes. that you can rest for a little bit? The most valuable thing at that point is food. Mm. When people bring mo uh, meals that you can freeze, and then right. Brian's looking at me like I need to know all <laughs> yeah. this. Uh, it is true to have people bring frozen dishes that's you know hopefully yeah. homemade that you can freeze yeah. and then break out a little bit at a, little, at a time. Yeah, and if you don't know, Brian and his wife are expecting yes. a little baby yes, coming up yes. soon. Is it May? Girl, Dad. Uh, Girl, Dad. Yeah, it's in May. Awesome. May 10th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, are you planning a baby shower for your wife? Um, we are. Someone? We actually like talked about it this morning, and so you know how that goes. I was talking to Sean, who's behind the camera right now, and <laughs> always talking to Eric because you know he's the professional <laughs> um, Dad. but um I guess you do you want to jump into the comments that'd be about? great yeah I post this on my Facebook page I have a vested interest in this because yeah. I'm planning my sister's baby shower right now so please by all means let me know what people are saying here. all right will do that's a lot of responsibility by the way yes. Maddie. Uh, Janelle says I would prefer no pastels no games uh, just get everybody together and celebrating the baby uh, Sandra says, I always liked the idea of baby showers where guys and gals were invited. I think the dads need to support, need the support of their family and friends. So a lot of people are pretty much saying like they want everybody to get together. Some people aren't really interested in playing like all the games, surprisingly. Right. I know, um, you know, my mom's not going to be too happy about that or my wife because they kind of like playing those <laughs> little games, but I would just be happy just to be there. Absolutely. Honestly, so. I think it's definitely up to the parents to be, right? Yeah. And yeah, how yeah. involved or not involved they want to be with this. But my sister said, you know, we live in Texas. All of our friends are in North Carolina. We really just want a big gathering with everybody. If they want to bring gifts, they can just ship them to Texas. So we'd have to pack them all. <laughs> That's right. That's that right. Makes sense. Smart idea. Yeah. All right. Let's give you a forecast here because we've got some rain we'll be talking about for Friday and for the first half of the weekend. But uh, the things are changing here for us, especially with temperatures 47 tomorrow. Rain will move in Friday late afternoon, early evening. We think definitely into the night Saturday. It is a 50% chance and a high of 51. Now Sunday Groundhog's Day looks like the sun comes out 56 degrees for the high temperature and we're looking at uh, sunshine for Sunday, Monday. We warm to 60 and hover there within a degree of that through Wednesday. A little rain moves back in for Wednesday and Thursday. It's a 40% chance. I just want you to note overnight lows Wednesday morning, Thursday morning are at 51 degrees. That's warmer than our normal high temperature, which is 49 for this time of the year. So grab an umbrella for your Friday, Saturday, but second half of the weekend looks good. By the way, if Punk's Tony Phil sees his shadow, which we think he will with the sunshine, that means six more weeks of winter. Here we go. Coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5 o'clock, a frightening ordeal for a young triad woman. Someone followed her, then shot at her. Her dad talks to us about the crime that could have taken his daughter, plus the latest on the investigation coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5.
maybe pay a few before or anything like that. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can you not hear me? Callie, 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 Callie. Hello. Mic check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mic check three, two, one. Mic check three, two, one. I am making my way to. Hello, hello. Ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. They forever go together like a.